what you believe Let me fill you in uncertain facts Tonight you'll find that you can't unwind Till the gifts are wrapped and the tags are signed You can't let go till the halls are glow With the fairy lights and the mistletoe You can't sit back or begin to slack Till you've signed the cards, here's a fear, old star No time for fun till the front door's done With a Christmas welcome for everyone Can't stop work till you've stuffed the turkey, the duck, the chicken, or the goose. But although you stuffed and you've had enough, even then you can hang loose. Don't dare to rest till the tree is dressed with a handsome present for every guest. And fade till the table's laid, the crackers set and the names displayed. Sweet sounds are here to bring good cheer with carol singers drawing near. Their voices ring as children sing a welcome to the newborn king. You can't take leave over Christmas Eve It's a time you're not allowed to shirk But from now I fear I just can't be here Cause I've gotta go to work Tonight for me is no jaunt or spree For I'm up to work at the BBC I guess that I'll be away but at least I'm going there in style Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Right away, may I wish all of you here in the studio and all of you at home a very, very happy Christmas. In a little over an hour from now, it will be Christmas Day, <laughs> believe it or not. And uh, so I, for one, will be getting back on my horse and carriage and going back home because I want to spend Christmas with my family. I don't really like working on Christmas Day, but lots of people have to do it, you see. There's all sorts of special people who work, all the housewives for a start and all the mums will be slaving over a hot turkey tomorrow and there'll be this, the people like the nurses and the special services who have to work on this day and I bet you that at this moment even somewhere on the M1 there's a fella starting to dig a hole <laughs> just in case anybody thinks they're getting home for Christmas they're going to get away with it there's going to be, there's going to be roadworks I promise you on the M1 and of course the BBC doesn't sort of close down for the day there's a skeleton staff here you know special people the commissioner will be on the gate down there and we'll also have the man who puts the shillings in the meter to keep the transmitter going while, <laughs> while you were talking, and the fellow who keeps an eye on the ear in case your picture gets wobbly. And there's one particular... Incidentally, is there anybody here tonight who works on a Christmas Day? Anybody here be working on Christmas Day? Oh, one lady. What would you be doing, love? Pulling pints. Pulling pints? <laughs> <laughs> on Christmas Day? <laughs> well done. Anybody else? Up the back? No, but just one. Pretty good. 
pretty good. As I say, as I say there's, in the BBC, there's just a few people who work. And I want to talk about a very special lady who, on Christmas Day, year after year, comes on, this, on your screen to give you a special message at Christmas. And believe it or not, she's here as my special guest to start the show tonight. You think it's the Queen, don't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely lady who comes to read your news every Christmas Day, Jan Leeming. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely to see you, Jan. Thank you for asking now, me. Now, I've always wanted to know. Now, you come in on... You've done this for years, haven't you? Christmas mm -hmm. Day. Mm -hmm. How many? Nine. Nine I've years. I've worked Christmas and boxing, or one or the other, seven years in television and two in radio. Because we have visions, you see, of, of sitting at home on, and there's just you and who else? And probably the weatherman. Probably. The weatherman, Isn't yes. It? So yes. what happens then? I mean, do you both put on paper hats and have a little party on well, your own? Well, there's a small chicken, a mince pie, one <laughs> cracker, and we fight over the hat. <laughs> and then little party games. Right? Oh, yes, sardine, charade. <laughs> yes, it's great fun. <laughs> no. being, being quite serious now, there's quite a crew of people involved with doing the news, aren't Yes, really? your bit of television centre is like the Marie Celeste, but our bit is almost as many people are as there every day of the week. Really? How many we people does it take to do the news? Ooh, huh? gosh, well over 100, I suppose, would be in the building. Gosh, then you've right. got the crews and the reporters out around the country, because the news doesn't yeah. stop and we just all pray yeah. that it so won't be... Bad I've looked news. it up actually, and the weatherman tomorrow is John Ketley. That's so, right. so you and he'll be having a party. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you know him at all, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know does him tomorrow. Does he wear his shoes? Yeah. Yeah, pardon? Does he wear his shoes? Does he wear his or shoes? Or does he go around in his socks? I don't know. You'll have oh. to ask him. You'll get to know all these things tomorrow. But this is your final year of doing the news, isn't it, Jeff? Yes. You're yes. going to have a bit more time at home. Well, I'm going to have my weekends at home with my little one. Yeah, how old is he now? Five and a half. Good. So, well, Jan, I just wanted you to come on here tonight so we can all thank you for putting your very lovely face on the television with thank the news you. for so long and come back on the screen with something else oh, very I hope soon. So. Meantime, I hope so. may I, Jan, may I give you this little present from us here oh. and wish you the very, very best and thank, thank you so you. much. Jan Leeming, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, now, we've been talking about coming into people's homes over the Christmas. We're very privileged we come into many, many homes. So this is my way of thanking you. You'd be so nice to come home to. You'd be so nice by the fire. While the breeze on high sang a lullaby. You'd be all that I could desire Under stars chilled by the winter And under an August moon burning above You'd be so nice You'd be paradise To come home and love It's very nice to go traveling to Paris, London or Rome It's awfully nice to go traveling But it's so much nicer Yes, it's so much nicer to come home And it's very nice to be footloose with just a toothbrush or comb. It's very nice to be footloose, but your heart starts singing when you're homeward winging across the phone. And you know your fate is where that old front gate is. All you contemplate is I'm back and I never will wrong. It's awfully nice to go traveling, but it's oh so nice to come home. Bye bye. Under stars chilled by the winter, and under an August moon burning above, you'd be 
Arizona's You'd be paradise To come home to And love Pass the slippers Burn my passport No more packing It's oh so nice To come home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like you to meet a very remarkable young lady and a very delightful young lady too. She's my first guest tonight. She's been spending her time traveling around. She's a percussionist. She plays all the percussion instruments, the sort of marimba, the xylophone, the vibraphone, and all the other percussion things. And she does concerts around the world. Now, take into consider consideration the fact that she can't hear anything that she plays because she lost her hearing when she was a young lady, when she was 12 years of age. And she's, as I say, quite remarkable. So please meet Evelyn Glennie. Thank you. Now then, I've been talking about going home, Evelyn. Are you going home for yes, Christmas? Yes, I, I certainly am. My family are all up in Aberdeen. But I hope the M1 workmen let me <laughs> pass. <laughs> You've just about catch them. Right? You come from Aberdeen. You don't spend much time there now, do you? Not so much time. I'm just so busy playing that when I do go back, I, I really appreciate just everything. Good. You know, and it's great. I love so it. So where have you been recently? You, you play in different well, parts of the world now, don't you? Well, I, this year I, I went to Australia and I studied for a while in Japan and from there I went to America and then I spent a day in Madrid. <laughs> oh, how nice. But it was great. It. Mm. Now, it's an amazing choice of instrument, I think, for a young lady like you, you know, playing percussion instrument. Is there a mm. big repertoire for things like the, the, the xylophone and the marimba? Well, not, not considering the amount of instruments. There are over 600 percussion instruments and hardly any repertoire <laughs> written for them. But um, really, it is gradually expanding, Good. but I'm not sure whether a lot of it is is so pleasing to the ear. Yeah. But if you don't mind, I really would like to play a piece Good. for you tonight, Love. which is called Robin Harry by Lawrence Inn. And I've I've ri I've actually arranged it for xylophone and marimba. Love. Can I play it? Are you too? go and get yourself ready, and I'll <laughs> introduce you all over again and Thanks. give you a welcome. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, just relax and enjoy the special talents of Miss Evelyn Glennie. Thank you.
Thank you, Evelyn. You're going to hear Evelyn play again later on in the show. Now, you got this new xylophone lately, didn't you? Yes, Quite recently. Yes, it really is. It's an early Christmas present. And how lovely. <laughs> mm. I'm glad you said that, because we were talking about big Christmas presents. I've had the most fantastic Christmas present of my life. I, I wasn't going to tell you what it was. I was giving Evelyn a few clues. Evelyn. What do you think? Evelyn. Oh, God, you I've, done it again. I've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? A corkscrew. A corkscrew. No, look, there's another clue. This... A saw. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's very big, it's green, and you knock a white ball up and down. You haven't been given your own golf course. <laughs> 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 I, have been given, I have been given a snooker table for Christmas, and I'm very privileged to have a friend who plays the game quite well. And he decided to come along to rehearsals last night. We had a great treat. So, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the former world snooker champion, Mr. Dennis Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> It's a pleasure to have you on as a, a very special guest for Christmas. Lovely Dennis. to be here, Val. I've been such a great fan of yours for a long, long time. I haven't missed many of your... Well, I missed no. a few in the early days. missed a few in <laughs> no, the early days. Oh, well, you don't go back that far. <laughs> but uh, these, this is one of my presents, as I mentioned, for Christmas, a very special present. I thought, now, what more could I ask than to ask if you'll kindly come along for a few minutes and give me a few tips? So tell me what to do exactly. Well, I've watched you in rehearsal, and you're pretty good. So what I decided to do is I thought, rather than me do all the trick shots, Let's see if you can play a few of the trick shots. I've got every confidence <laughs> in you. So we, we'll work out a few little shots here right. for you to do, a few trick shots. <laughs> so we're going to start off with a... Are you going to show me what to do? If you come round this side, Val. Yeah? So what am I... This goes in over there, does it? Well, no, not that, that doesn't go in here. In fact, believe it or not, you're going to pop the black, which is tied up on the top <laughs> cushion here, into the corner pocket. I am. It looks impossible, but I have every confidence in you. Bless your heart. <laughs> Thank you. This is it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, now, you've, you've managed to pop uh, the black there. Uh, now we're going to go on to something even more difficult. We're going to see if we can get you to pop three balls this time. Now, is it the one you were showing me today? That's right. Right. I've got to, I've got to pop what? The blue? The blue, the pink and the black. Yeah. So we put the pink on its spot, the black on the blue spot. And if we just get... Could you just pass us the cue, Val? Thanks. Right. Which side do you want me to do it from? You do it from this side here. Right. So you've got to pot the blue, the pink and the black. Only you've got to pot them without moving from the one position. From here? So you've got to pot all three balls from this position. Right. Well, there goes the blue. There goes the blue. Now, give him a chance. Here I we go. I put this here. Watch this. There goes the pink. <laughs> there goes the pink. Yeah. When we were over in Japan, as I say, they'd never, ever seen snooker before. In fact, we go to this top pocket. They'd never, ever seen snooker before. And uh, I'll put a black over the pocket. And I said to, can I just borrow your cue, Val? Yeah. I said to one of the fellas, the cues were on the table, I just says, would you uh, see if you can get the black into the bottom pocket? So the white was there, and he walked up to the table, and he obviously didn't know how to use the cues, so he picked them up. He must have thought they were large chopsticks. <laughs> and he's gone like this. And it was amazing. He's just picked the white up on the two cues like this and just suddenly potted the black. There <laughs> The what is the most serious now? What is the most difficult of these shots that you said of these trick shots to do? Well, there's probably I think the most difficult shot is uh, is one the great Joe Davis, the late and great Joe Davis, made famous. It was called the machine gun shot. He used to do that with six colours. Now I've done it with eight reds on television, so um, we might have a go at a little record to see if we can get really? nine nine reds. And it's never been done on television in uh, in this country before, so we'll have a little go at that now. Eh? Well, you're going to give me a record on my show, are you, for Christmas? That's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Well, we'll try, we'll now. try. It just takes a few seconds to set up this one. Come on now, Dennis, concentrate. Five, six, seven, eight. We need another red. Here we go. I 
have now, to. We're going to finish off with a, with a shot that a lot of people have seen me playing on the television. In fact, there was uh, about 14 or 15 million watched this one. And I'm going to be very, very brave tonight and let Val finish off with this trick shot. Very special one. <laughs> right, you... right, well, I'll climb up here. Yeah. I must be crazy doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if I, could, if I damage you... Listen, I'd better take these glasses off, because I'll need them again. <laughs> OK. Don't move me, whatever you do, Dennis. <laughs> and don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you do, don't giggle. <laughs> <laughs> you, did this with a, you did this with a beautiful girl on television, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, well, what I said was, uh, you've got to be very quiet, because the last time I played the shot, the young lady swallowed the black. <laughs> and then I said, well, you should have seen the shot I played to get the black out again. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Now then. If this goes in the hole, Dennis, there will be a standing ovation, I can tell you. Right. Ah! Well, what a treat, Dennis. Thank you very, very much indeed. I had every confidence in you. I knew you were going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's been lovely. Fun. You couldn't have given me a nicer present for Christmas. And may I wish you and your family a very, very Merry Christmas. Thanks very much, Val. And the same to you and your family. Lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Dennis Taylor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dennis Taylor. As I said, that was quite a treat for me. That was a delight. Well, you know, it's a long way. I've been sort of suggesting I got a snooker table for Christmas. Nowadays, the presents that people get are quite alarming, really. The things we give to our children and so on. I can remember many, many years ago, I used to sing a simple little children's song about a toy that went and when it moved. And do you remember that one? Yeah, you do. Well, tonight, if I may, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to do that little song for all time's sake. Now, because I did that on the first ever Christmas show I did on BBC Television. Now. When we recorded that song, way back in the early 60s, we had sound effects on it, which were very good and made all the difference. And we haven't got them tonight, so I'd be very grateful if the audience here in the studio would do them for me. Now, they're very simple. You don't have to worry. First of all, would all of you here simply go like that? <laughs> uh, do be careful of the people in front of you when you do this. I will count three, and I want you all to go. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> So just if I may, would you just do the three of them for me so you don't get them mixed up? I'll go one, two, three, and you go... <laughs> like that. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> OK. Now, here's the song. The Marvellous Toy. One, two, uh, three. When I was just a wee little lad, full of health and joy, my father homeward came one day and gave to me a toy. A wonder to behold it was, with many colours bright, and the moment I laid eyes on it, it became my heart's delight. Now, cos it went boom and it moved, and when it stopped and when it stood still, I never knew what it was and I guess I never will don't lose interest now we got four verses to go now the first time that I picked it up I had a big surprise right at the bottom were two big buttons it looked like big green eyes I first pushed one then the other then I twisted its lid and when I put it down again well here what it did it went when it moved and when it stopped and stood still i never knew just what it was and i guess i never will you feel daft you look daft third verse it first marched left and then marched right then marched under the chair and when i looked where it had gone it wasn't even there I started to cry and my daddy laughed He knew just what I'd find 
When I turned around, my marvelous toy was chugging from behind. And it went when it moved and when it stopped and when it stood still. I never knew just what it was, and I guess I never will. Last verse, give it everything you've got now. If you've got anything left. Well, the years have gone by too quickly, it seems. My daughter brings me joy. And yesterday I gave to her that marvelous little toy. Her eyes nearly popped right out of her head. She gave a scream of glee. Neither one of us knows just what it is, but she loves it just like me. Cause it goes when it moves and when it stops and when it stood still. I never knew just what it was, and I guess I never will. Everybody, I never knew just what it was, and I guess I never will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we, when we were doing this show, we were talking about being at home for Christmas. We were trying to think of songs that would sort of suit the situation. And we came across this a song was probably one of the oldest songs about home. In fact, it's called Blister's House. Very suitable at this time of the year. And I'm joined on this once again by Evelyn Glennie. Thank you.
Thank you, Evelyn, very much. And incidentally, I've got a little present for you as well. That's for you. You're not, you're not to open it till tomorrow. Thank you All very right. much. And it's lovely really to have you that. on the show. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. One of the programmes currently running on BBC television is the Choir of the Year series. And my final guests tonight are featured in that. As a matter of fact, two, two days from now, they will be appearing in the semi-finals. Their choral director, Vaughan Meekins, has written a lovely little Christmas song. It's called The Stable Cow. So here to sing it now are the Arts Education School Chamber Choir. So let's give them a big welcome. Thank you. And thank you, Vaughan. That was lovely. Well, since we're nearing the end of the show, and indeed we're nearing Christmas Day, I thought it'd be rather nice if we sang some traditional cows together. The girls will join me. 
if the audience in the studio would like to do likewise, and indeed you at home. So let the girls start things off. from afar Hark now hear the angels sing and you king born today and man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day While we're all in good voice, ladies and gentlemen, I think it'd be rather nice if we just finish with probably what is the most popular Christmas song of all time. Christmas 
Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen To hear sleigh bells in the snow I'm dreaming of a white Christmas With every Christmas card I write May your days be merry and bright And may all your Christmases be white. Well, Christmas is almost upon us. As a matter of fact, Christmas is well upon people down in Australia. They're, it's Christmas morning there. They're opening their presents and all the surprises. Whereas on the other side of the world, in Dallas and Texas, it's the middle of Christmas Eve. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. They're still shopping. Mind you, they've got so much money over there, it takes a little bit longer to spend it. However, wherever it is with you, whether Santa has been or not, I'd like to wish you all a very, very happy Christmas and a very happy New Year. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas With every Christmas card I write May your day The tooth and nail fight for Saturday night TV audiences here on BBC4 this evening. Reality, drama, talent shows and the good old-fashioned talk show get down and dirty to take the crown at nine. After a little more Christmas from Top of the Pops, next. Next.